What you are about to see is a dramatic reconstruction of events that have taken place on board ship, leading to injury and death. Inevitably, these contain incorrect and unsafe practices, which are intended to promote discussion amongst those watching. So we recommend that the video should be used together with the trainer's guide under the supervision of a training officer. Good afternoon, first mate. Good afternoon, sir. Do we have a pilot? Just come on board now, sir. Good. Are we ready stations fore and aft, Chris? I think we can call them now, sir. Stations fore and aft. Stations fore and aft. Better make it 1720 in the Seventeen twenty it is, sir. This is Swift Balker, Master speaking. Good afternoon, sir. We've been requested to inform you that a CIS boarding party are authorised to search your ship. They are on their way to you right now. I don't believe this. How long is it going to take? I'm going to miss the tide. I've got tugs and a pilot standing by. Sorry, sir. Can't be helped. You have about two hours. The tugs and the pilot have been informed, sir. OK, Port Control. Thank you. Bloody authorities. I will have to wait. I need to see the captain. No, this ship leaving. No. I need to search the ship. Please take me to the captain. Okay. Me go ask captain. You two head for the bow section and wait for further orders. Captain, my apologies, sir, but we have orders to search your ship on the basis of information received in the last few hours. We hope you'll cooperate in this matter. Yes, I've just been speaking to head office and they've instructed me to give you every assistance. What exactly are you searching for and how long is it likely to take? Uh, the answer to your first question is classified, I'm afraid, sir. As to your second question, I don't know, maybe three to five hours. Chris, stand everyone down. Will do, sir. Inform the engine room. Hear this. Sailing's postponed until further notice. Sailing's been delayed until further notice. Hi, Chief Chris. There's a CIS search party on board, so sailing's delayed indefinitely. I don't know. Stand everyone down for the moment. OK, cheers. Oh, that didn't realise coal stank so much. Yeah, there's an awful lot of it and all. Mm. Oh, you should take the plane next time. <laughs> I have two men at the bow section who'll search the deck area and below deck. My two colleagues here will search the engine room, particularly the steering flat and the bilges. Well, I don't see any problem with searching the steering flat, and I can get someone to give you access to the bilges. Now, when you say below decks, do you mean the tanks and cofferdams? Well, anywhere where a load of small packages can be hidden. Yes, I was afraid you might say that. Some of these places have been locked for weeks. Do you still need to search them? If you do, they'll need to be ventilated. I'll decide that as we come to them. I'll get someone to help you. Uh, Chris, can you get the second mate to come up to the bridge, please? Second mate, please. Second, Chris. Come to the bridge, please, right now. Yep, on my way. Yeah, look at that. What did you make of that? 
Oh, yeah. Can I help you? No, thanks. Everything's under control. The captain knows we're here. All right, then. Cheers. So what, that goes round, does it? Yeah, that spins round underneath that. That pulls that through there. I'm going to ask the second mate to take your colleagues down to the engine room where the second engineer will show them to the steering flat and the bilges. Uh, then we'll equip your men at the bow section with gas detection equipment. But you must tell me which tanks you intend to search first before anybody attempts to make an entry. It is most important. Thank you, Captain. That sounds just the job. Ah, second. Sir? Uh, these men are going to search the steering flat and the bilges. I've informed the second engineer. I'll take them down to the control room, then go to the emergency equipment store and get two personal gas protection monitors, a harness, and take them to the forecastle store where there are two more men who will search the deck and the tanks. Very well, sir. Right, gents, if you'd like to follow me. Oh, God, I'm in the size of it in here. What's this all about? The foxhole room? Poor. Oh, my God. It's huge. Oh. Yeah, look. What's all this? No one's got any Elvis Presley. <laughs> yeah. Here, what do you want? Tea or coffee? Uh, tea, please, one <laughs> Hey, Bob. That's all mine. Oh, stop it. <laughs> hey, what's for real? How the hell are we going to search all this crap? Stuff could be anywhere in this ship. Ah, oh, use your brain. Who's going to hide anything in here? I oh, know. It's all got to be searched, though, isn't it? Yeah, you're right. Hello, right, second. We. These are the two chaps from the uh, search party. How come? They want to have a look at the uh, bilges and the steering flow. Okay. Uh, where do you want to go first? Well, why don't we just start with the steering flow and then we'll just come look at the bilges? Okay. Excuse me. I can proceed with that. Okay, Thanks. I'll leave these chaps first. Let's go then. Uh, if you want, take uh, one of these, please. And uh, just follow me. Okay. Hey, now why would someone leave that open like that? That's been in a real hurry. More importantly, why wasn't it closed in the first place? Good question. Now my mind is on a place like this. That definitely deserves a closer look. Huh, rather you than me, mate. Cool. Steering flat, gentlemen. OK, well, I'll search the steering flat, cos I think my colleague here is dying to have a look around the bilges. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. That's so? I'll see you later, thanks. OK, good luck. Well, let's go to the, to the bilges, then. If you start at the main deck, you shouldn't have any problems. And while you're doing that, I'll get some of these tanks we discussed ventilated. But please inform me the moment you're ready to start the search. Thank you, Captain. Much obliged. Hey, Frank! Come and have a look at this junk! Frank? You deaf? Come and have a look at this crap! Frank? Frank? Where are you? Where are you? Frank? Stop pissing around! Talk to me, you bloody fool! Shit!
Hey, you! Can you hear me? Bridge, bridge, second mate. Bridge? Two of the search party have collapsed and are unconscious in the four peak tank. I need emergency rescue immediately. Two casualties in the four peak tank. Message understood. Stand by. Sir, two of the search team reported in the four peak tank, apparently unconscious. Damn. I told them. Full emergency response, please, Chris. You take local command. I'll set off the alarm. Hear this. Hear this. This is an emergency. Search team leader, Captain Calling. Officer in charge, what's happening? Two of your men have been found in the Four Peak tank, apparently unconscious. An emergency team is on the way. Please get to the bridge as soon as you can. Why do they go down there? <laughs> These questions are for later. Please come to the bridge as soon as you can. I'll just check what the position is. Be coming up. What's going on here? This tank hasn't been open for weeks. Two of your men have gone down there, and, and now they're probably asphyxiated. Well, let's get them out, then! You can't! Not with that breathing apparatus! Look, our men are on their way. We'll get them out. I bloody well hope yeah. so! I've got to see the captain. Help! Anybody there? Two casualties, four peak tank! Four peak tank, four peak tank! Bridge, Chris. BA1, pressure 195. Okay, mate, down you go. Over here. BA2, pressure 197. Down you go. Watch yourselves. Send down the resuxy pack! There's a pack coming down now. Give him air. <laughs> Check the straps are tight. Mask off him and take his pulse, all right? Yeah. 
Roger, copy that. Stretcher coming down. More rope! We need more rope! Lower it some more! We'll pull up the stretcher and use a longer rope. What happened? Artic, get me the face mask. Okay. Okay, okay. Put it on. I'll connect him. Send down the stretcher with a long line. Okay, okay. I got all the straps nice and tight. Give me that one, yeah. Watch his neck. Easy. Easy. Okay. Get him down. Easy. Okay. Mask off and check his pulse. Bridge, Chris. Go ahead, Chris. Both casualties are out now, sir. Thank you. Can you confirm that they're alive? Okay, Chris, stand the rescue team down now and come and give you a report. What does he mean, negative? That he can't confirm or that they're dead? He's not qualified to make such a decision. If he thought they were alive, he would have said so. <sighs> Damn. Well, we've informed the police, the HSC, and the shore rescue party of the incident. They'll be here any moment. They'll have a paramedic with them. We'll find out soon enough. Ah, second. Uh, send the two men searching the engine room up to the bridge, please. But we haven't seen anyone come up here. And their commanding officer is with me. Second. I found the missing party near the shaft tunnel in the bilges. He's injured, conscious, but in severe pain. Okay, second. This is unbelievable. Don't let the second guy out of your sight. I'll send a rescue party down there as soon as possible. I'm speechless, sir. This is beyond belief. Your chap appears to be badly injured. It's a good job the shore authorities are coming aboard. They're better qualified to deal with these injuries. They'll deal with this one.
Hadi gel çöğün ya. Yedim ya. Kusun ya. Kusuna kurt kaydı. Yağlık şok oldu ya. Ne? Şu bak. Yeah. Okay. A step up and down, Gary. Don't forget. We're in. Right. We're going to sit him on the floor. Put him on the floor. Are you ready, right. Jim? Yeah, standing by. Okay, we'll have you out in a second. Just keep calm. That's lovely, Jim. Keep it going. All right, mate. We'll soon have you out. We've got a stretch you're waiting for you just here. Go I've only got about a foot left, Gary, now. Uh, this is the first draft of the report that we shall have to submit to the authorities. We have had two deaths from asphyxiation and a severely injured party with at least one bone fracture. A number of lessons can already be drawn from these incidents. The two deaths occurred because men entered a tank where the atmosphere could not support life. They entered without protective equipment and without checking the atmosphere. The first man rescued was still alive when they found him, indicating that he entered the tank some time after his colleague. Experience shows that this happens when someone discovers a casualty in a confined space and without raising the alarm, goes to the rescue unprotected. Many seafarers have died like that. No doubt you'll have to write your own report for your own superiors uh, and you will have to draw your own conclusions from today's events. That's correct, sir. Please convey our thanks to everyone involved in the rescues. I'm sure they did everything possible in the circumstances. I'm desperately sorry about all this. Um, if you'll excuse me, I have to go with the ambulance now. HQ will be in touch with you about the search. My apologies. Now for the rescue attempt itself. We have only one stretcher on board. Yet we have had to rescue two casualties who were not wearing harnesses. How do we attach a safe lifting point to a casualty who is not conscious? We need to address this. A rope which is not long enough was attached to the stretcher, causing delay. We must check that all our ropes can reach the bottom of a tank from deck level. How was it that we did not have a tagline available for the rescue? We must make sure that all the rescue equipment on board is familiar to everyone and that the right piece of equipment is employed correctly at all times. Now, this raises the issue of rescue drills and how often everyone should be involved in them. Some rescue situations involve very tight spaces which call for improvisation. For instance, how do you move someone on a stretcher in a double bottom area? That's why these things must be practiced, so that no one is caught out in a real emergency. The only genuine accident today took place in the bilges. The man picked up some oil on his shoes and slipped, climbing out of the bilges. The fact that he fell back on piping is most unfortunate and aggravated the situation, probably causing the actual injury. These incidents have shown how important it is to be fully aware of all safety procedures on board ship and the vital need for everyone to think safety first.
The casualties in the story were not seafarers. They did not know the risks they were taking on board ship. Seafarers do. They know the correct procedures for entering into enclosed spaces. They know they should follow the correct rescue procedures and practice the use of equipment available on board. But despite that, too many seafarers die on board ship in similar circumstances. The vital lesson to be learned from this is that whatever we do, we must think safety first at all times.